Hey friend, do you love the smell of books? Maybe you absolutely delight in the sound of a pen gliding across a page as you write. Hi, my name is Shira Rodriguez, and I am a Jesus follower, a writer, entrepreneur, and lover of all things boho and books. In this podcast, I want to take you on a journey of discovering yourself, discovering God and your passions, and how to make your life beautiful and so full that it overflows into the lives of others. And over here, we are not about compartmentalizing life. Oh no. Over here, we talk about holistically taking your life and presenting it as a place where others can be blessed just by knowing you. Are you excited? I am. So snag your favorite mug of tea or a pen and paper and let's jump in. Because you're listening to Her Reading Life Podcast. Hi, sweet friends. What have you been up to lately? Do you guys have any habits you're working on? I've been working on building my writing habits this week, especially as I knew I was going to be talking about this on the podcast for this week's episode. You know, at first I thought this was going to be super simple. I thought I had my writing habits pretty well established. <laughs> Wrong. So today, after much thought and deliberation and experimentation, I'm so excited to give you my thoughts on how to make time for your writing. But first, let's lay the foundation, shall we? I don't think this needs much explanation if you're listening to this, but if you like to write, chances are that you often just feel like you don't have enough time to actually sit down and write. Here's the crux of the matter, though. It's not really about finding time. If you try to find time for writing, you're going to be playing that cat and mouse game for some time. There are so many things vying for our attention these days. Instagram, text messages, television, Netflix, work, clubs, groups. Oh, the list goes on and on. And if we don't intentionally make time to write, we won't write. It's a lot simpler to press a button on a remote or swipe than it is to write. It's hard work. And keeping that discipline, like all habits when they're at that tender infant stage, will take energy to continue and grow and develop. That's why it's super important, before anything else, to focus on your why. What made you fall in love with writing? Maybe it's the image of someone reading your book and having their eyes light up as they read the words on the page that you strung together. Maybe it's the glorious feeling of letting the words flow out of you into a symphony of language that thrills your soul. Maybe it's a message that throbs within your heart and longs to be in the heart of others as well. Whatever it is that made you fall in love with writing and keeps you going back to it over and over, write that on a sticky note and pin it above your desk. Snag a Canva template and tape the poster to your wall. Whatever will help you remember your why. Because on those days when you drag your feet over to your keyboard or notebook, whatever works, your why is what will keep you from wandering away and stoke that fiery passion within your breast. In fact, if you would like to have a why poster for your own desk, head over to my show notes below where I'll have a link where you can get a template I designed just for you. Okay, so are you ready to jump in? Because I am super excited to give you some tips I've found worked for me in helping me make time for writing and actually keeping the writing habits, which is very important. Something that's helped me make time to write and at the same time helps me keep up that habit is setting up a recurring time and ideally also a regular place to write. And in this case, consistency is key. It's better to write for 15 to 20 minutes every two days than to write for two hours once a week. Yes, it is a little bit more difficult to get into the zone in a smaller time frame. More on that later. But here's the thing. If you want this to become a habit, it is so much easier to sit down for a 15-minute writing session than for a two-hour one. It also gets your brain used to the act of writing. Repetition ingrains the habit into your mind. Creating a recurring time of day also shortens the time your brain takes to go into writing mode. It creates something similar to a neural railroad track, where your brain already knows that at this time, this is what you do. Obviously, it won't happen on your first or second try, but after several regular sessions, you'll find that it takes less and less effort to get into that writing mindset. Writing in the same place also gets your brain into the mood you need to write. Again, it's just cementing the idea that this is what you do at this time on this day. You're 
kind of setting up a biological clock. And after a while, you'll find that your mind actually prompts you to write, something that I've actually started experiencing lately. I used to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to pray and read my Bible for an hour and then jump straight into writing at around 6.30 in the morning until around 8 a.m. Depending on the day and amount of fairy dust slash inspiration hanging in the air. But recently, I've been waking up a lot later than I used to. And yet my brain still prompts me to write. And if I miss a day, you can bet your bottom dollar my brain will be after me. Because I've established that habit of writing every day. My mind now craves it and feels deprived if I don't do it. Consistency is key. I totally understand if you can't write every day. I know a lot of people say you ought to write every day. But I don't think that's necessarily true. I write every day because I'm a professional writer, and even then, there are days that I just honestly miss. But because I've created the habit, I'm able to slip back into it much more easily. It's more important that you regularly write on certain days than how often you write. Every two days is going to be better than once a week, but don't rack your head about it if you can only do once a week. Consistency is the crucial element here. So set up a regular time and, if possible, a regular place to write. Tip number two, set a timer for a short amount of time. Chances are, when you set up a regular time and day and place to write, you aren't always going to be inspired or motivated or even ready to write. And this is where my handy-dandy friend, the timer, comes into play. Something I do to really help me get into the zone faster is to actually set a time limit. This is something I initially started because of my eyes. Often they would get quite tired and dry from staring at the screen for a long period of time, so I set a timer for five minutes. At the time, that was all I could manage without my eyes getting tired. And so I'd write and then look out the window or walk around. I was at first concerned that it would interrupt my concentration, but on the contrary, I found that it helped me concentrate on my work so much better. That time pressure and knowledge that I would feel terrible if five minutes passed and I didn't write anything really boosted my writing. More than that, I think it was a challenge it presented, almost like a game. All I had to do was get something on the page. It didn't have to be perfect, and sometimes it definitely wasn't, <laughs> but Often I would find that my writing was far better than I'd expected, and I had the pleasure of seeing my beautiful words on the page. It also made the writing process far more subconscious, which is the goal anyway. Often I would overthink my writing, and the timer was incredible at helping me keep my perfectionism at bay. If you are feeling particularly stuck, I definitely recommend trying this. You see, your brain is a little bit like a faucet. It takes a little while to get the hot water when you first turn it on, but that doesn't mean the hot water isn't there. You just need to have patience with the process and allow the faucet to run for a time until you get the hot water at the temperature you desire. Likewise, sometimes at the beginning your writing may be slightly messy, but that doesn't mean there isn't talent just waiting beneath like a seed in the soil. Think of using a timer as a way to speed up that running water period of time. If you make mistakes, have patience with yourself. It's all part of the process and remind yourself that you can always go back and fix it. Unlike some of the other arts, like theater and sometimes even painting, a fresh start is only a backspace away. Hey friend, can I share something really exciting with you? Okay, well, here it is. The Author Conservatory is releasing their very first short story anthology on December 5th. Now guys, I don't know about you, but there is nothing I love more than a good anthology. Every story nestled within is a precious world, just waiting to be explored. But here's the beautiful thing. It's not only a platform for the voices of young writers, but a fundraiser to help them attend writers' conferences to pitch their books to agents and editors. So you get to read the wonderful stories in this collection and support the next C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien's of our generation. If you'd like to get a copy for yourself, you can pre-order through the link in the description box or by going to bio.site slash Shira J. Rodriguez. That's bio.site slash Shira J. Rodriguez. 
Before we jump back into this episode, I wanted to tell you about a secret project I'm working on, and I think this might be right up your alley. You see, for years, I looked for a writing and reading community of young women who delighted in exploring ideas, discovering books together, and worked together to compose literary masterpieces and enduring friendships. But recently, however, I've been beyond blessed to find other young women who yearned for the same kind of connections I did. And if you're someone whose heart is just burning right now, listening to me talk and getting all excited, I have amazing news for you. I'm working on a community-based project that I'm so excited to give more details about. If you're interested in learning more and joining, hop onto my waiting list by heading over to bio.site slash Shira J. Rodriguez. That's bio.site slash Shira J. Rodriguez. I so hope to see you there, friend. And now, let's jump back to the episode. Tip number three. Set up your senses for success. It can sometimes take a while to warm your writing motors, but here are some things that can actually make you take far longer or even block your creative juices from flowing. Have you ever had that groggy feeling after watching a movie marathon for two and a half hours straight? Well, it turns out that when you watch movies, it numbs part of your brain, your thinking side, and thus gives you that weird, I can't think right now feeling. This is why I try to avoid writing after watching anything. When I watch even a YouTube video, sometimes I go into passive mode. I'm receiving information, not giving it out. Writing is definitely not an input action, but an output action. And so demanding your brain immediately switch from input to output mode can be taxing. So if at all possible, try to avoid watching content or scrolling on social media before you go into creative work. This helps you avoid a lot of frustration and dead-end paragraphs before you even start writing. The same also goes for texting and other managerial types of actions sometimes. But of course, this isn't a hard and fast rule. If you happen to scroll social media for 30 minutes before your writing time, maybe take a quick trot around your neighborhood or gaze out the window for a couple of minutes. The idea is to awaken your five senses so that your brain is alert and open and at its most creative state. I know this sounds a little bit new agey, but I promise it's not. Your senses are essential to creativity and awaken part of your brain that otherwise wouldn't be active. Walking outdoors and spending time in nature is spectacular for brainstorming. I've tested it myself and it's the best thing in the world. But there are other ways that you can also awaken your senses even while writing. Light a candle you enjoy the smell of just before you write. Play a favorite writing playlist with soft ambient music. Get a favorite cozy sweater and snuggle into it as you write. Warm up the neurons of your brain by writing a couple of notes or opening words by hand. Talk your ideas out loud and think through them, imagining your scenes. Or, if you're writing nonfiction, envision the feeling you want to convey. Drink a hot mug of tea or foamy coffee as you write. The point is to bring your brain up to its most creative sensory state so you can turn on that faucet even before you start writing. Does this mean you have to religiously stick to a certain writing routine where you have all these things? No, not at all. These are just ways I've found and several friends have also found a wonderful way to perk up their brain and get it ready to start the creative process. There are times where I honestly just plop down into a chair and write. There are times where I am hit with inspiration and just jot down my notes on a random piece of paper. I've done napkins too. Yet when I feel my brain needs a little bit of coaxing or I just need that extra writing push, I turn to these helpful little things. The idea is to help you write. Don't of course use this as an excuse to not write, which can definitely happen because I know by experience, but hopefully these will get your brain ready to birth your words into the world and make for a far more delightful experience. And now let's get to some book recommendations, shall we? Here are some of my favorite books on writing that I've found incredibly helpful. Some are for fiction, others are for nonfiction. One of the books that I would definitely recommend is Outline Your Novel by K.M. Wyland, and it's accompanying workbook, Outline Your Novel workbook by K.M. Wyland also. I personally go to these books all the time for reference, 
And I personally use the workbook more than the actual book itself. I find this super helpful for creating a structure for my novel and for ideas and spurring on my imagination. As a pantser, I don't follow her exact methods per se, but I do get a lot of ideas from her workbooks and from the things that she's written in these books. So I highly recommend it, whether you're a pantser or a plotter or an outliner, whatever, whichever camp you're in. I would also recommend, especially if you're into nonfiction, On Writing Well by William Zinser. I actually did not discover this book until about a year or two ago, and I was surprised by how much insight there was and how much I learned. I'd done essays and things like that before and nonfiction works before, but listening to advice on how to write nonfiction... There was so much that I had to learn, and I highly, highly recommend reading this book. William Zinser is such a wonderful writer and does it in such a funny way that you're actually laughing at your own mistakes, and especially the times when you realize that you've done whatever he's saying not to do yourself. The Complete Writing Dictionary, edited by Clement Wood, is one of my favorite rhyming dictionaries for poetry. So if you're a poet and you're using this to also write your poetry, I highly recommend this. Whenever I'm stuck with any piece of poetry and any rhyme that I have no clue how to finish, any poem that I'm kind of stuck in, this book has helped me out of many a mental ditch. I highly recommend it. I've used it for several years, and this rhyming dictionary in particular breaks the rhymes down into phonetic sound, and so you can easily look for the sound that you're looking for and find the words that match the sound. I highly recommend it, especially if you're into poetry, but it's also wonderful for any type of writing if you want to give a rhythm and flow to your writing. Friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and hopefully I've pumped you up to start writing again and create a regular writing habit. I truly hope that this has helped you. I would love to hear from you guys. What are some things that have helped you create a regular writing habit? Do you have things that help you turn on the creative faucet or some favorite writing resources, I would love to hear from you guys. And you can always DM me on Instagram at Shira J. Rodriguez or email me at Shira J. Rodriguez at gmail.com. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for listening this far. And I truly hope that this has inspired you to keep going and keep writing. And hopefully this will definitely help you with creating a writing habit for your own life. Until next time, friends, keep living, giving, and repeating. Yay, you did it! I'm giving you a lovely big virtual hug because you just finished another episode of Her Reading Life podcast. If you'd like to access all the wonderful links I mentioned in this episode, visit my website at bio.site slash Shira G. Rodriguez. That's bio.site slash Shira G. Rodriguez. There, you can access my blog posts, resources, and so much more. Also, check out my Instagram page for more inspirational content. And join my email list for insider secrets and exclusive updates on special events. The links are in the description box below. Also, if you could take a minute and leave a review for this podcast, that would be amazing. We're able to reach so many more people because of your reviews and ratings. I can't wait to chat with you next time, friends. Keep living, giving, and repeating.